everyone and welcome to this video which is a review of a lot of sustainable products. Um, I am crazy about sustainability and I like to live with less waste and that is why I'm going to be reviewing a couple of products here for you. Um, I have a lot of products that I have tried such as shampoo bars, toothbrushes, uh, cotton pads, um, beeswax wraps, so, um, and, a, uh, and a couple of products that I have not tried yet, but uh, I still would like to share with you guys. This is kind of like fab or fail video. Did I like it? Did I not like it? Is it a uh, perfect substitute or does it need a little extra getting used to. Uh, that's what this video is about. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, please, um, for all of the product links, please check the description below and post any questions if you have them. All right, I'm going to start off with something easy, which is toothbrushes. Um, I've been buying plastic toothbrushes for a long while. Um, yeah, and I would like to buy more sustainable things because you need to buy at least a couple a year and I uh, just don't feel good about that and I know that there are better options. So I have tried the Berlin Bio Brush and the Humble Brush which is a bamboo brush. So let's start with the Humble Brush. The Humble Brush comes in a paper box so this is easily recyclable. Um, the brush itself is bamboo and the bristles are from nylon and uh, these cannot be recycled at the moment. You'll have to pull them out with um, tweezer or whatever that is called and just put them in the non-recyclable bin. The, I don't know what you call it, the general waste bin. Uh, and the handle uh, can be composted. You can put it in a compost, but uh, I don't have a compost bin, uh, so I would not be able to recycle this. I would be able to like use it in my garden to just you know stick it in the ground with a little a tag like tomatoes or whatever. Uh, but I would not be able to recycle it at this moment, uh, which is why I have uh, decided not to. Um, buy it again. The brush itself is quite nice. Uh, it's a little bit hard at first. They only have one uh, choice. I don't think they have like soft, medium. Um, but yeah, I found it a little bit hard and uh, or a little bit tough. And the bamboo handle can be a little bit tough on your mouth corners. Um, yeah. It uh, felt a little bit like it was chafing at, uh, at the beginning, but um, overall I'm still quite pleased. Uh, I'm just more excited about the Berlin Bio Brush. Um, the bristles are much softer. Um, it's very nice to use and um, same here, the bristles cannot be recycled at the moment so they have to go in general waste but uh, the handle itself can go in either general waste or plastics. Um, this is a bioplastic that is made from wood chips um, and um, so if you put it in general waste it will not produce any kind of uh, toxic smoke or it just it will cause no harm if you put it in general waste but um, it's better to put it with plastics same with the packaging is also you can put it in plastics um, but yeah the bristles you'll have to pull them out or you'll have to break off the uh, the head of the toothbrush so um, I think this is a kind of easy fix at, at the end of the life of the toothbrush. So you have to pull, pull out the bristles, so it's a little bit more work, but I mean, I don't really, I don't really mind. So for me, that is an easy fix. Now, I also bought some toothpaste uh, from G Organics or Jorganics. Don't know how to pronounce that. Um, 
which says on the packaging is zero waste, 100% vegan, recyclable packaging, organic formula, cruelty free and gluten free. Okay, I mean, which uh, toothpaste is not gluten free? Um, it is also free from fluoride. So, um, and I've always learned that fluoride is kind of a must have with um, toothpaste, but um, who am I to say that? Um, so, it's made out of coconut oil and uh, charcoal. Yes. <laughs> and so this is a paper packaging, which is great. Um, the toothpaste itself is in a black, no, not plastic, in a glass bottle or jar. And you get a little bamboo scoopy thing with it to put it on your brush. Um, uh, it is gray because of the charcoal and the, uh, so it's activated charcoal and it's said to whiten your teeth. Um, I have to admit that I haven't used this quite a lot. I have used, I've used it a couple of times, um, maybe for like two weeks, but um, <laughs> it's just, it's kind of weird. Uh, it tastes kind of uh, salty. Uh, it still smells like like peppermint, but um, it's, there's also like this this weird taste to it. Um, I think I will use the rest of it. I haven't noticed any teeth whitening effect. I, I generally don't notice that with toothpastes. Um, it was easy to use, just with the little scoopy thing. Put it on a toothbrush. It's just a little bit, you know, it's it's not as easy as a regular toothbrush uh, paste, uh, which is probably why I didn't use it. And it's kind of kind of weird to see your teeth like with gray toothpaste. It's just very weird. <laughs> but uh, I would still recommend it, although it is not such an easy fix for toothpaste. Okay, next up is another very easy fix, which is paper tape instead of plastic tape. I use this to, um, you know, to wrap my uh, packages uh, for my hand dye yarns. I uh, print out the uh, address and then I stick it on there with this paper tape. Um, I think I, I find it even easier than plastic tape because, because you can just tear it and with plastic tape you can't. Um, the only downside is that well, th with plastic tape you can see through it so if you accidentally uh, stick on top of the address doesn't matter and with this you know it kind of does matter. <laughs> uh, but uh, that's just yeah. I find this an easy fix. It was cheap. Um, the brand is Raja. Raya. I'll put all the, the brand names uh, on the screen anyway and um, the links down below. Uh, but yeah, easy fix. Then um, cotton swabs, uh, which are biological. Um, they can just... They are made out of paper. Uh, I would still say that you uh, dispose them with general waste uh, and not with paper, but um, you know, it's not made out of plastic, so that's a win. Although um, after I bought this, I learned of the uh, of the swab. I think it's called Last Swab, uh, which is a reusable swab, and um, yeah. So I will just use this because I want to say this, the most sustainable thing that you can use is the thing that you already have. Um, so really be sure to use what you have to recycle, reuse. Um, and uh, so that's why I will be using these, but uh, I would not have bought these if I knew of the last swap. So I'll be looking into that, but not before I finish these, which will probably last me a couple of months. So also 
easy fix but yeah check out the last swab if you're looking uh, into sustainable options for cotton swabs um, up next is beeswax wrap beeswax wraps <laughs> um, I have bought some beeswax wraps seriously it's such a tongue twister but okay so uh, I bought them now because I attempted a DIY version with some cute fabrics and uh, it turned out not to work very well. Um, I had bought some beeswax um, and jojoba oil, jojoba oil, and um, you melt these and basically make a huge mess <laughs> and uh, then you put some paper on a baking tray with baking paper on it and then um, you either put it in the oven or uh, you um, put another sheet of baking paper on it and then you can uh, iron it which is what I did because um, it gives you a little bit more control over where the beeswax goes because when you melt beeswax um, it becomes hard again very fast so um, yeah so then I used the iron to kind of push the the beeswax where I wanted it to go um, the thing is uh, I hadn't I hadn't uh, felt any proper beeswax wrap so I didn't know how to do it properly so I thought okay well this feels waxy so it probably uh, will do the trick um, but so for example let's see let's say I want to wrap this um, it will kind of hold its shape but not really so uh, I would need to tie it um, in order for it to stay put um, and yeah it just didn't work very well um, I did use the wraps for a couple months for um, cat food tins for my sandwiches to take to work um, yeah but I decided to buy some proper beeswax wraps and so Here's what they look like out of the packaging. I've already taken one out. So this is really like it's really really stiff and of course this is fabric and this well I'm not quite sure what it is. It's probably like paper but okay let's say we want to wrap the same box again. It will just stay put. And that is what my wraps did not do. So I'm glad that I finally did buy some beeswax wraps. Um, they are a little bit pricey. Uh, they were about 17 euro for three wraps and then you get one large one, which is this and it's, uh, it's probably big enough for my lunch uh, or for a watermelon, something like that. Um, and then the medium, which I just showed you, which could be to wrap, I don't know, a single sandwich or maybe a, a zucchini or some other vegetable or fruit. And then you have the small one, which I use to wrap the cat food tin um, because we use one tin for three days. Not that you needed to know that, but uh, just, um, yeah. I am very pleased with these. Uh, of course, I have only had these for a week now and um, they say to last up to 10 months but uh, yeah I'll try that out but for now I definitely consider it a win um, whereas my fabric uh, beeswax wraps um, were I don't know I just I would wrap my lunch in it and if I didn't eat it quite fast enough it will kind of like um, dry so yeah that wasn't really nice so I'm excited to try out these wraps so while we're talking about preserving 
lunches and bread. Um, I wanted to show you my bread bag, which is a large cotton bag, kind of like a pillowcase, and with some ties at the end. So you can put a loaf of bread in here and then just, you know, tie it. Um, like that. We got these because we eat a lot of bread, uh, usually three loaves per week. And, um, you know, there's a lot of plastic. Uh, just, there's a lot of plastic each week. And uh, when I saw these and I heard that they could even go into the freezer because we usually uh, buy three loaves of bread, put them all in the freezer and then take them out whenever we want to use them and then use them for like two or three days. And um, so I got these and then I would go to my local bakery um, because then I could ask him, ask them to put the loaves of bread directly into, uh, into my bags and not put them in the plastic bags. Whereas if, you know, if I would, if I were to get bread at my local supermarket, they would already be in plastic bags. So, um, we tried that for a while, quite a while actually, but we found that the bread became kind of hard already the next day, um, which was not great. Um, and we ended up throwing away more bread than we would usually do. And once I had, um, I remember one time we didn't have time to go to the, to the bakery or it was closed or it didn't have enough bread or something like that. And we would just uh, like, okay, we'll buy a supermarket loaf then. And uh, I remember it tasting so good because it was so soft. And then I was like, okay, I'm not doing this anymore. Um, so even though I love the concept, it's just not working for me. Um, you know, it would, it would keep your bread like soft for like one day, but after that, nope. So yeah, I'm kind of sad because that was one of our biggest plastic saving opportunities, but uh, turns out that it didn't work. Um, yeah, so we opted out of that one. So that is too bad. There's the logo, Leves Zonder Affal, which means life without waste. I got all of these products from their website. Uh, but yeah, I'll be using these bags for something else now. I can still use them as, um, you know, bags to put um, fruit, vegetables, or like onions in. So, um, so I will still use the bags, but um, yeah, sadly, I will still have plastic bread bags. All right, so you've seen this little box before when, you, when I uh, went to wrap it in beeswax. This is a shampoo bar by uh, Helemaal Shea, which is the brand. Uh, it's a Dutch brand. Um, yeah, it's a 100% vegan soap bar and it's just, you know, it's just a soap bar. Um, I've used it uh, many times. Uh, I'm still not completely sold on it because um, I don't know if you've ever washed your hands with a regular soap bar and then, uh, you know, it feels great when you're washing your hands and then um, you rinse your hands and you dry your hands and then like they become the like opposite of slippery. I'm not sure, like very, um, not rough, but it's just not nice. You feel like a, uh, like there's a little layer of grease. Um, and that's exactly how my hair feels after using this. And uh, now I know that, um, um, and that's why I haven't given up yet. I'm probably using too much and your hair also goes into this kind of detox mode. So, um, yeah. <laughs> so I just, 
I kind of need to push through, but um, I'm still on the fence. So what you want to do is kind of like uh, put it on under the water and then just just like slide it over your hair a couple of times not more but uh, I would I would just add more and more soap and then it just got too greasy um, so yeah I still need to find a good way to use this um, but I will continue to use this and just wait and see because it does give your hair a lot more volume uh, the packaging is great it's just a paper box there's no plastic at all. Uh, it smells great. Um, so I will continue to use it, but um, yeah, just just not completely sold yet. Uh, and in my new order that I placed, I got a conditioner conditioner bar from the same brand. I haven't opened it yet. It smells very um, lemony. It smells so good. Um, oh, look at that. <laughs> so, yeah, this smells really good. And um, so it doesn't say on the box. It says just apply to wet hair after washing. Massage with fingertips. Leave in for two minutes. Rinse thoroughly. Um, this one is for all hair types. You also had one for dry hair and one for greasy hair. But I chose this one and uh, they say if it makes your hair too greasy, just be sure to not use it on the first four centimeters of your hair. Um, which is just kind of, you know, because your, your roots don't really need conditioner after all. So yeah, I'm excited to try this. Um, uh, maybe because uh, the shampoo kind of leaves your hair feeling like not smooth at all and this will kind of maybe counterbalance that so i'm excited to try these together um yeah but shampoo bar i will continue to try it not completely sold yet but by all means try for yourself because it's different for everyone everyone has different hair um yeah so just give it a try uh and don't use too much and just use a little bit at first and see how that goes. I've also bought some cotton pads. Now these look really dirty. <laughs> they were white when I bought them, but um, I use them to get my uh, makeup off. So this is just mascara and they are washed, but uh, after washing, they just look like this. So I bought cotton pads and a little cotton wash bag um, to wash them in. Um, this, these are to replace the um, cotton pads that I had, but you know, the cotton, the, the just disposable ones. I really like these. Um, hey, my cat is coming to say hi. <laughs> hey, mama. Um, yeah, I just, I have a few things to say. Uh, when you wash them, be sure to really tie a knot in the bag because when I washed them the first time, the pads were like all over my washing machine <laughs> uh, because they got out. Uh, so that's the first thing. The second thing is that I also use disposable cotton pads to um, um, remove my nail polish. And I would not use these for that because I'm sure they would work, but um, I would need to have like one designated one for nails because I don't feel good using nail polish remover, putting it in a wash and then using it for my eyes. Uh, just the thought of that, it's just, no. <laughs> so I might need to buy a separate set for nail polish, but I still have some disposable cotton pads right now, so I'll just use those because use what you have first but yeah these total win total um it's easy to use easy to replace your cotton pads um yeah i use one pad for uh three evenings 
because, you know, um, you don't have to, it's not a one use item every time. So yeah, I like these. Okay, so now I'm going to talk to you about sustainable deodorant. Yeah, because deodorant is one of the things that's probably the most polluting, like um, the spray bottles. I've I've stopped using spray deodorant for a couple of years. Uh, what I really like to use were the kind of cream deodorants, which sounds really nasty, by uh, Rexona or Dove, like the kind of ones that you you twist and then more comes out at, at the top. I really, really like those. And uh, depending on how good this goes, this is Nude, which is a deodorant which is really popular right now. Depending how how well this goes, I may or may, may, or may not be going back to the um, other deodorant. So I bought this one, Nude, and I bought this one, which is a kind of oil. Um, it's lavender coconut oil. And as you can see, it's, it's uh, fluid right now. Uh, which it wasn't when I bought it. It was just kind of like a cream. So now I just cannot use it uh, because it's just the coconut oil on top and the other the other products or the other like ingredients are all at the bottom. So right now I cannot use this. Um, I have used it for a couple of times and I just found it to not work at all. Um, there was also no um, instruction of use whatsoever, which there is for the nude. Um, so I'm not sure if I should be using this in a different way or I don't know, but I just would not recommend. Uh, I can probably still use it as like a scent diffuser, you know, one of these, um, you know, those oil tabs and you kind of Put them on a candle um, and the oil kind of you know it's a scented oil thing because it does smell really nice but it just did not work as a deodorant um, the nude which comes in a paper packaging uh, the tube is made out of uh, cane sugar it's totally free uh, totally cruelty free totally vegan uh, it's not free it's one of the most expensive deodorants that I have uh, purchased but they do say that uh, you can use a little tube like this for a very long time so um, yeah so I bought a dual packaging and which I think was 20 euro or 25 euro can't really remember but um, yeah so the thing is that you um, that you use only a tiny amount. I'm not going to open this one because I still have the other one. Um, you just put a tiny amount, like like a pea-sized uh, drop, and then I divide it, so I just put half on my other finger, and then you just put it on your armpits. Um, they say that you only have to use it every three to seven days which sounds like a dream because um yeah just less product um sounds really good but your body really goes into detox so um i have used this for six weeks now i think maybe even eight weeks um i'm not sold on it um at first it makes you, it almost is like it makes you sweat more uh, but it's uh, it's just a different kind of deodorant so um, the deodorants that we usually use are and well I don't know the English term in uh, Dutch is antiperspirant antiperspirant uh, which kind of it also stops the sweating but this one it says it just kind of it stops the sweat from smelling bad uh so it kind of regulates your body hormones and stuff uh i'm not an expert on this um and 
what I like is just just that it works continuously for a couple of days even if you you know you shower every day and then you know it still still works so um, but for me it just uh, doesn't seem to be working yet but you know I will continue to use um, use these um, maybe it will start working for me right now I apply it every three or four days uh, but you know I it doesn't stop the sweating uh, which kind of makes me really uncomfortable uh, because you do sometimes have sweat stains and it just doesn't make me feel nice which makes me stressed which makes me sweat more so yeah that's not a good um, thing for me and also um, it did not stop the smell uh, the first two weeks so yeah, I'm I'm just not I I know that <laughs> they say your body goes into detox and it's, you know, normal and you should continue to use it, but um yeah, I just didn't find it really nice. Um and they say um you have to wash your clothes after every everywhere. Uh, which I usually don't do because my deodorant would, you know, work well so that my clothes did not smell and I could wear them for maybe two or three times. And with this deodorant, it says, well, they might, there might still be some bacteria in your clothes and if that then comes in contact with your skin, it might activate the smell. So, so basically, you would have to wash your clothes after each wear, which... In turn is not really um, good for the environment because I don't want to wash more um, so at the moment I'm kind of hesitant um, is yeah do I want to use less deodorant or do I want to wash my clothes less often and I think I might be going back to my old deodorant but uh, I'll just uh, see, I'll use, because the other tube is like not even halfway, halfway done. So I'll probably have four months, four months of use out of one little tube. Um, so that is a win. Like if you're going on a big holiday, uh, like a big backpacking trip, and you only have to pack this little tube, that's a win. Um, but yeah I just with the clothes washing I don't know yeah I'm just I just don't know but same here uh, same with the shampoo bar this works differently for everyone uh, they have a, a website uh, which is new to nude and then the two is like the the number new to nude uh, which gives you a lot of tips on first-time users so and I think I got that website right yes uh, nudecare.com slash new to nude and then the two is a number um, yeah I would still recommend you to try it because it apparently works for a lot of people and if it works you know then that's great but for me it just uh, caused more stress because it didn't stop the actual sweating um, and I have to wash my clothes more often which is not mm, yeah not very good so yeah I'll let you guys decide on that but this one definitely not recommend <laughs> but I'll see if I have ah now I know candle wax melts. That's what I was comparing them comparing them to. So I might buy one of those dishes and use this for that. Those were the products that I have already used. Um, yeah, some of them are great, some of them less great, but I'll leave it up to you to decide if you want to give them a try or not. Now I have two more products that I also bought. Uh, which is for doing laundry 
and I am really excited about these. Uh, so first up is a uh, fabric softener uh, by the brand of Sapien. It says it's 100% plant-based. I think I'm, uh, I'm translating that correctly. It's 100% vegan. Uh, it's a recycled plastic. Um, this is a paper tape and this is a paper. So um, yeah, it's not, of course, not completely recyclable, but um, yeah, it's better than the fabric softener that I have, and that's what it's about for me. Um, I am excited to use these. Um, I really like the packaging. I haven't, I haven't smelled it yet. Maybe I'll just do that right now. Um, The scent is Frei and Blei, which kind of translates to free and happy. Oh, that does smell really nice. It smells of eucalyptus. I'm not sure if it actually has eucalyptus in here. Uh, no. <laughs> I'm not sure. All of the ingredients sound like an alien language to me. Um, yeah. But it has an, an ecological certification logo thing. So, yeah, I have high hopes for this one. Uh, same as for this one, which is the Eco Egg Laundry Egg, uh, which basically is a plastic egg filled with... No, this is not... Uh, it's kind of filled with, like, pellets, um, which act as laundry detergent. I'll uh, show it to you. And you can use this for up to 210 washes, which they say is up to one year uh, of washing, based on four or five washes a week. Uh, so I only do like one wash a week. I have no kids. So um, I will probably use this for three years. Um, yeah, so you open it by pushing kind of a button and then sliding it. <laughs> they probably do this so that kids cannot open it, but as a result, it's kind of difficult for me. <laughs> Seriously! Ah, 10 hours later, I opened it. Okay, uh, and there are little bags in here. The bags look like plastic. I'm sure they can be recycled. Um, no, it does say warning plastic bags. It doesn't say if these bags are actual plastic or also bioplastics. So yeah, that is questionable. So you need so you need to put in one bag of black pellets and three bags of white pellets into the eco egg and then it's okay for washing. Oh, you can also use it for hand washing if you soak the laundry egg for about 10 minutes in the water and then take it out and then you, um, you wash your um, hand wash in there. Oh, top up with refill white pellets after approximately 70 washes or when the pellets fall below the halfway line of the larger pointed end of the egg. So I think they do kind of get smaller and smaller so that it will kind of be intuitive when you have to refill them. But um, I will just start using it and then probably, sorry for the crinkling, I will probably fill you again, fill you in again after um, a couple of months. Um, yeah, Jesus. Okay. <laughs> 
Okay, yeah, so I am excited about this because uh, if you see how much detergent we use each year, you know, detergent is not good for the environment, it has harmful ingredients, the bottles are just plastic, and uh, you know, they're huge, uh, just, just a lot, a lot of plastic, so I'm excited for this product, and um, I will let you know what I think of it. Yeah, so that concludes my review on sustainable uh, products. But as always, and as I've said before, the most sustainable things that you that you can use are the things that you already have. So that also applies to clothing. You know, um, don't just throw out clothing. See if you can reuse it. See if you can do clothes swap with someone. Uh, reuse old towels for you know God knows what so um, just yeah be mindful when you buy new stuff don't just buy stuff because you think it will be good if you already have um, like say you already have a life's worth of uh, shampoo don't go buying these shampoo bars because you know even paper waste is extra waste um, you know, just, just be mindful, uh, take your own grocery bag with you if you go grocery shopping, even paper bags are waste, so, uh, yeah, just be mindful of that. I hope you enjoyed this video, um, as I said, please check below for the product links, I am not affiliated in any way, so I'm just, you know, a huge fan of sustainable products. Um, at the moment, you know, I've bought all of these at a Dutch web shop, but, uh, or a Belgian web shop, I should say, I think it's from Belgium. Um, but I will try to find some, um, international websites for you. Um, yeah, just let me know if you enjoyed it and then I will consider on doing more of these videos. And if you would like a specific review for a product, just let me know below in the comments. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and um, I'll see you next time.